right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you this footage was filmed with no plan at all to integrate the footage into a 3D scene. There was no idea at play. It wasn't lit in a particular way, uh, which is a terrible way to make a film. <laughs> so it's just for the purposes of this video to taking something that had absolutely no plan and seeing if we can still find a way to make it look like it belongs in this 3D scene we're going to create. So we're going to tweak the lighting and make it look like it was meant to be there in the first place. So aside from there being no plan and the lighting being generally poor, this was also a challenge to work with when it came to roto and 3D tracking. So if you want to know how to deal with challenging footage, I would recommend checking out these previous videos of mine on rotoscoping and tracking for difficult and poor footage. Apart from all of that, there is still one problem with this footage when it comes to placing it in a scene for lighting purposes. It's been filmed with mixed lighting. So on the one hand, you can see on one side of my face, it's orangey and, and pretty hot in the reds. And on the other side, more white. So we're getting kind of daylight from one side and also like an interior 3200 Kelvin light shining on me as well. And this can be an absolute challenge. So what I've decided to do is dive into After Effects and slightly tweak the color balance of the footage. I'll be honest, there's not a lot you can do with this. So if you've shot with mixed lighting, the best thing you can do is tweak it so that there's a sort of a balance between the two sides as best you can. And also I've worked on desaturating the image a little bit as well, which seems to help because when you get into Unreal Engine, if you want to shine an orange light at something that's already quite orange, you're just going to compound the orange and it's going to just look a bit kind of too much. And again, if we're going for a lighting match, that's not going to help a great deal. I've built this scene. I couldn't help myself. It had to be a spaceship, obviously. So here we are in the engine. My footage is on a plane here. If you want to know how to set this up, check out one of my previous videos on bringing in media planes and actors into Unreal Engine. That's gonna be up here. Um, we're currently in unlit mode, of course, because if I go to lit mode, there ain't no lights, man. Now, you can see me in like perfectly lit right here because the material we're using is an emissive material. So I'm not actually being affected by the light at all because there isn't any. I'm only basically giving out light. It's as if I, it's as if you're just watching the video as it would normally play, but the plane doesn't, uh, doesn't take on any of the environment lighting. If it did, I'll show you what that looks like. All that's happening here is you've got this texture sample, which is the video of me, and that's plugged into the emissive color. And then you've got the alpha, which you can see here is just the cutout from the rotoscope. Uh, it's another RGB texture, just a white on black texture, running through a small multiply node and then into the opacity pin. So it's very simple, ignore the rest. You've, uh, the only thing else that's going on here is that I've turned the metallic specular to zero and the roughness to one, which you don't want actors to look really shiny, basically. <laughs> so that's why I've done that. So with the main RGB texture of me, this image here running straight into the emissive color means that I'm just giving out that basic light, but I'm not going to be affected by it. If I turn that pin off and place it into the base color, what we should expect to happen is in the viewport, you should now not see anything. This will treat as our base. So there's no lights, you can barely see anything. So now we're gonna add lights and try and see what we can make. So let's grab a point light, drag it in. And you can see as I move that around, that's gonna affect me, it's gonna affect the environment. And I'm gonna jump out of this camera mode and just move it around. Now you can see my footage is moving around wherever my camera goes. That's because I've have, I have it set so that it's always in that position, uh, which helps for when you're in the camera mode because then you can scrub through. And as the camera moves, it moves with the footage because it's tracked. So technically we can drag this light anywhere we want, but 
that's not necessarily going to give us a good integration. We do have to bear in mind the lighting that I was under when we shot my plate, my footage plate, because <laughs> there is only so much you can do. There's only so much flexibility you have in terms of blending. You really do need to bear in mind where the lights were, what was their intensity, what was their size. All of that is going to be dead important to make sure that you get a good integration. Mm -hmm. So I know that we have a light on my left and it's giving off a kind of a white light. We've done some desaturating obviously previously, but we still have to bear in mind that there's a, the balance is still a little bit off. So I'll move this light across here. And we want to, I'll go back to my camera mode. We want that light to look like it's in the right position. So I'm gonna place this behind this pillar here and place it around there. So what that does is it is illuminating this side of the set here. And it's also illuminating me to a degree on the left-hand side. It's still illuminating part of my right-hand side as well, because I am essentially a 2D plane and it's kind of like shining a torch on a piece of paper. Simple as that. So this is only going to do so much. It's not going to light us in 3D. We're not going to suddenly see loads of different lighting setups, but we're going to do what we can to try and make it look like those lights are affecting us. So that's one light, but we also have another one to place in. When I was filming my plate footage, there was also a small interior light casting a bit of an orange glow on the other side of me. So I'm going to basically grab that same point light and just duplicate it and drag it over to the other side. Just out of frame, I think, because we don't have a light source in the scene currently. We just need to imagine where that light's coming from. We want that to be about 3200 because that's the Kelvin of the bulb that was shining on me at the time. So let's do that because I'm already still a little bit red here, which I shouldn't be. We kind of discussed this, but if I go 3200, I go, I go much more red, but so does the, this side of the set. And that gives us a bit more to work with. Apart from placing those lights in, there are a couple of other things at play here, which are helping sell this illusion. And that's these boxes, the ones that are on the left-hand side, because if you look at the footage of me here, you can see that the left-hand side is illuminated down to about my waist, where the light starts to just sort of stops. And the back part of my trousers as well is in darkness. So we have to assume something is blocking that light. So I'm gonna grab one of these crates and move it in a bit, because we want to get the sense that something is blocking the light and that thing has to be in the scene. We have to use the props to basically trick our minds into thinking that these are real objects. So let's pop that in and let's just bring it up a little bit. I think I need to, oh, bit too much. Change the scale slightly so that it seems a bit bigger. There we go. So now that's in the scene. Let's see that, to make sure this is actually touching the floor. It is. So we've got some lights in the scene and it looks fine, I, I guess. Uh, but I guess that's the problem, I'm guessing. How do we know it's right? I would recommend going over to Mixamo, the website where you can download a model of a person and then we can place that into the scene exactly where the plane is. So we can actually see how the light is going to react and see empirically, is it correct? So we're gonna do that now. So this is us in Mixamo now. This is the mannequin that I've chosen. I'm gonna call him Mannequin Skywalker. The reason I've chosen this one is his clothes are the right level of brightness based on what I was wearing. You don't want to pick something that's too far different because you were trying to gauge the brightness as well as the position of the lights. So this will actually help us a great deal. So you can download your character and then we're going to pop him straight into the scene. So there he is, he's in the scene. Let's position him correctly, uh, somewhat similar to what I, to the way I'm standing. I'm, 
I don't I haven't sorted out his arms. I've just I'm just gonna plop him straight in. Um, this is gonna give us a rough gauge of <laughs> the lighting. I don't need him to be standing exactly the way I'm standing. So let's see how he is. Is he hovering off the ground? Yes, he is. Let's uh, place him in position. I want him to be at a, uh, standing at around the right height as well. He almost is. Um, so where is he in relation to the plane? You can see the plane outline here. Obviously, you know, video of me is all over the place, but you can see the outline of the plane. That's all we need to know where that is. And he needs to just be uh, intersecting with that. So that's about, about there, I think. So the video plane is there and his feet are just intersecting with that line. And I'm going to rotate him as well into uh, so that he's standing roughly in the place. And he's a little short, so we're going to make Mannequin a little bit bigger. There we go. So I think my head is tilted further away. I'm looking further down the hallway there. So we need to rotate him a bit more, more like that, I guess. I'm going to actually move him a tiny bit more <laughs> just to get that position. Um, bang on if we can't there we go so I'm sort of there okay if we assume this is right we can get a good gauge of whether the lighting is in the right position so we'll turn him off and on toggle him on and off using the eye in the world outliner and then we can see where I am so we know the front of my jumper is actually quite dark actually there's there's a sort of shadow on my uh, across my arm and around my front as well which only gets brighter as it gets down towards my towards where my trousers are so what we can assume is that the light is further around me and it's illuminating my neck and my head but it isn't managing to reach all the way around to where my arm is so we need to emulate that essentially um, so yeah what we can see on the mannequin here is it is actually illuminating his jumper and his face. So we take the light that's shining there and let's move that into further, so that it's further away, more like that. There you go. So now we know, I think there should be a little bit of illumination, but not too much. So now we know that that is casting correctly on the front because it's illuminating the face, not the sides of where the jumper is, but we're not getting anything on the legs, which is a problem. So maybe we need to fiddle with its position a little bit. You also have to bear in mind, my trousers are a slightly brighter color as well. And this guy's wearing darker trousers. So that could well be the issue there. Um, Cause if everything else is correct, then you could probably assume to a degree that we're on the money. We can't really change the color of his trousers. I don't know if you can in Mixamo, that might be something to have a look at. So let's say that's good. And now I'm also noticing that we've probably pretty much nailed the position of the other light because as it is on me casting across the back of my, across the back of the neck, down the back of the jumper, but then tapers off around the trousers, which is exactly what you see. Um, so we'll turn off uh, mannequin. There you go. It's illuminating the neck, nothing further around than the neck, down the back and then tapers off. So that's, that's good. And that, to, that's a way of us telling that we've actually done the job, I guess. But there's also the issue of uh, intensity as well. Now, what we have to remember here is that when we're moving lights around, we're not, we're not doing anything to the uh, molding of, of me essentially in the scene we're just shining lights at a piece of card basically so the intensity uh, is going to really depend on how bright we are when we're being having a light shone at us so we don't really adjust the intensity of the lights we adjust the intensity of the video let's say for instance we brought in the video and it was just generally too bright it doesn't matter the intensity of the lights you'll always look too bright so we will need to have a look at the material uh, that that's creating the image of me and darken it or brighten it based on what the intensity value should be so we're bringing mannequin back in and we can just have a we can eyeball this and we can literally see whether or not uh, I am brighter darker than 
the mannequin. To my eyes, turning him, toggling him on and off. To my eyes, the mannequin looks a bit brighter than me. Very, very slightly. Not, it's, it's not really that pronounced. I think we're actually quite kind of in a sweet spot here, but I would also suggest that we brighten the material a tiny bit. And we can do that by going into the material. We can do this one or two ways. We can either increase the values of that by adding a multiply node. Plug that into the base color and then add a constant. And that constant, one being where we are now, anything above one is going to be brighter. So we can literally set this to 1.2 and that will brighten that material. So we save, apply, and see if we're right. I would say that's probably right. And looking at it, I feel like we've done a pretty good job actually. Final thing, as ever, it's really useful when you're doing this kind of work to actually be working within whatever it normally is that you're gonna render with. So if you're rendering from the viewport uh, or using sequencer or movie render queue, then just using the viewport like we have been doing is completely fine. For me, I render using Octane for Unreal, the plugin, which is free, and I recommend you check it out. But normally, if you're going to be rendering with that, then you should be trying to get your lighting match with that as well, because each render engine works in different ways. So this is the result from Octane. I think that's actually doing a pretty good job. The reason I like Octane, as anyone who's watched the channel will know, is it is a path traced system, which means that it is actually giving us physically accurate results. So I'm really liking the way this looks, with the exception of the fact we do not have any contact shadow near the feet because we don't have a shadow plane in place. Now, because this is my renderer of choice, I'm just going to recheck that the mannequin matches with my material. So I'm going to turn the mannequin on and it should pop into position in Octane. There it is. And now beyond it, I think that actually looks all right. Although the mannequin again does seem a bit brighter than it did before. So with that, I probably would brighten up my material. Another way to deal with brightening the material is not necessarily constantly multiplying it because what you're doing there is you're adding contrast as well as, uh, as, well as that brightness. So it's probably not the most efficient method of doing it. The alternative is to duplicate the texture sample, which we're gonna do here. I'm gonna plug in my UVs again. And instead of feeding this result into base color, we're gonna feed it over into the emissive color, which means it will give out light, but we don't want it to be giving out tons of light. It's too bright, obviously, in the viewport, you can see there. What we wanna do here is we want to actually multiply that with a constant three. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to select a color on the scale of white to black. I'm just going to want to increase the emissive a tiny bit so that it starts to match with what's in our viewport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select somewhere in the middle just for the moment and make this window a tad smaller so we can sort of see what's happening within the octane render as well. So we just want to be able to see that. Let's apply those changes and see what happens. I think that there is actually looking right. Uh, you can see the skin tone there is actually very, very similar. And the jumper practically uh, is practically the same tone entirely. So that's really good, actually. Let's, uh, let's see how that looks now. And I think that's working pretty well. So thanks for joining me on this video. On the next video, we're gonna be looking at how to add shadows to this very same scene. So please stay tuned for that. And as ever, if you've stayed with me for this long, please hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel out a great deal and smash the like button and all those things. <laughs> but thanks for joining me and I will see you on the next one.